Welcome to Chat with Sunlight, a homeschool podcast. Spend a few minutes each week catching up with sunlight. Connect with other homeschoolers for encouragement, tips, and fellowship from around the globe. Plus, we'll explore some of the -the behind-the-scenes happenings at Sunlight and take a deep dive into your favorite homeschool products. Each week, we'll chat with Sunlighters just like you, new homeschoolers, homeschool bloggers, Sunlight employees and advisors, veteran homeschoolers, and even Sarita Holtzman. Like Sunlight's curriculum offerings, we will explore homeschooling through the lens of a literature-based christ Center education. Join us for everything you might be interested in from organizing your homeschool, connecting with others, and details on literature-based learning. Thank you for joining us today for part two with Beverly Jacobson with Verity Village. So tell us, how did the idea of Verity's Village come about? Mm. So it goes back to that those desperate days when we we just literally were not getting sleep. And I it's hard to describe that to someone who hasn't been through it. It's not like the newborn phase. It it didn't end. And and we learned later that she has obstructive sleep apnea. So we, you know, at night now she's on CPAP and that keeps her airway open. But she literally she would stop breathing. And we didn't realize this because her saturations would you know, the machine would show us that it looked good, but she wasn't fully able to sleep. So four to six times an hour, we'd be, you know, trying to get her settled and and back to sleep. And it was, it was a really stressful, exhausting time. And so in that time, I remember our pastor had shared, I don't even remember what the sermon was about, but he shared uh, an example of his friend and his wife who had had a child with significant disabilities and that the Lord had used that in their lives to help them start, um, build a place. uh, I don't even know what it's called. It's somewhere on the East coast and it's a a respite place. Basically parents could bring their loved one there for medical care and, you know, mom and dad could get a date or the family could go do something that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do, you know, with having to care for Uh, their their other sibling or child and I remember being in church and almost crying in the back row just like I need this (laughs) I was so desperate and we are we're now in Colorado and I in the Colorado Springs area and I would go walking um and just the the evergreens here and seeing the mountains and that just soothes my soul that was like my one little piece of time with Jesus that I could get renewed for another day of whatever we had to get through and as i was walking and just enjoying the beauty of colorado and crying out to the lord i just started to have this vision of a place and i knew right away the name was verity's village and I I imagined it as a retreat and a conference center where we could specifically minister to families like ours who were in desperate need of some kind of rest or respite. And even though I knew in that season of life that uh, there's no way I could do this, I was so needy. I just believe that the Lord put it on my heart as a vision for the future, what ministry could look like. So, and we call it the Verity's village because we've always joked, it takes a village to take care of Verity because she has her nurses. She has a co- very complex medical team and therapists and all sorts of things. So Verity's village was the name. I started talking about it with my husband and our kids. And then in our minds, it has been built up to this amazing place where everybody's going to want to come vacation there. But here's the thing. It doesn't exist yet. <laughs> So Verity's Village, though, is a nonprofit, and we have been functioning for two years, serving families all over the United States and the globe. There are people in other countries that have found support through our network. So I'll try to give you a super quick nutshell version of how that came about. Save the Storks is a pro-life organization. Some people may have heard of their their mobile units. Well, they um, put on a pro-life innovators summit and they encourage Christians who want to start a pro-life ministry to receive training. And so I had learned about that. They're right here in my backyard in Colorado Springs. So I applied with this idea of the retreat and conference center. Okay, this could be our ministry. Maybe this is it. Well, as I was doing research and development for that. Meanwhile, of course, people know our story and I'm starting to get, hey, can you reach out to so-and-so, my friend or my 
relative. So we started ministering to mamas who had received a prenatal diagnosis, which is a close part of our journey because that to me was the hardest thing is not knowing. And I began writing a book, which is out now. Right. It's from diagnosis to delivery. It's basically a guidebook. How do you deal with these, nav- you know, navigate the emotions? How do you talk to your medical team? How do you write a birth plan when your baby may or may not be alive in the delivery room and so on? So we created these resources for these mamas. And uh, as I was doing this, I was doing my homework for the pro life summit. And uh, I realized, okay. This, this is Verity's Village. Right now, Verity's Village is providing a village of support to families who otherwise are being pushed towards abortion and not receiving that help. Because we knew Jesus <laughs> from the very beginning of the journey. We have a blood family who were very supportive. Nobody, nobody considered abortion in, in our family. Our church family you know, very, very supportive. So we had a village of support. And as I was ministering to mamas online who were finding, you know, connection here, not everybody has that village of support, nor do they have that foundation of truth that tells them this baby is precious and not a mistake. And it's in everybody's best interest for that child to grow and be with you as long as God chooses for that to happen. So Verity's Village, uh, we we provide welcome packets to mamas with those particular resources for the pregnancy. We're able to provide Christian counseling um, sessions for them so they don't have to pay for that. And then we send care packages for babies that are born, whether they're alive or stillborn. We have unique things that we send to mamas to commemorate those lives and just continue to support them as long as they want to be part of our network. Um, so there's a an online support group for them, but then we are interacting via mail and Zoom sessions and other things as well. I know my daughter has been in a group and she still is involved, even though Ravana passed mm-hmm. almost two years ago now. It, wow. You know, she still gets support from them. She's still involved. Yes. Hopefully they would like to be, you know, on the, the counseling side, the helping and the doing and they do we will have to stay in touch then because i know we need to grow our network of counselors <laughs> so maybe someday <laughs> well, i will after we're done i'll give you her contact info she yeah but that's that's one of the things i was going to ask i know that i'm going to link verity's village on the podcast links but i was going to ask you um your book is it available on your website or is it mm-hmm. so <laughs> yes it it's on amazon um, if you search the author, Beverly Jacobson, my books will come up. Um, if if there were to be any families listening who have a diagnosis, we provide those free of charge. So you could reach out to us at veritiesvillage.com uh, to get connected that way. We'd be happy to do that. If anyone is working in a pregnancy resource center or involved with perinatal um, hospice care, we love to partner. We have some um, hospice providers who purchase uh, in, in bulk. Uh, our books and our journals so that they can provide those to their clients as well. So we'd be happy to, to chat with you more um, about that. But yes, if anyone it just wants to to read it, to learn and more about, about that journey. Um, it, I, I think it, it's helpful to understand the perspective of what the moms are going through, but yeah, that's available on Amazon. Okay. Well, um, Beverly, is there anything, if you had, there, Beverly, if there's one thing you could say to a an expecting mom, whether they're a homeschool mom or not, mm-hmm. what would be your besides putting your faith in knowing God is our sovereign God? What would be your biggest advice? Mm. You know, <laughs> um, I'll couch this in in. I, I want to to also validate and and give understanding to, I know many mamas struggle with infertility or secondary infertility, and that has not been part of my journey. Um, And so I want to be sensitive to that too. But for, for me, it was, um, I I have to be honest that there were a lot of times that I was staring at the, the pregnancy test, the two pink lines, and I was not really happy. I felt overwhelmed, honestly. Um, 
I just, I, I felt like I was not an adequate mom at, of healthy kids. And then when we were going through the journey with Verity, I thought I, I can't do this. And so um, I was always grateful for the nine months <laughs> that God gave me to grow that baby and to grow my heart and to prepare my heart and mind. So um, I guess I kind of feel that to, to speak to the mom that feels overwhelmed. Um, I have a, a mentoring ministry um, and a program for, for homeschool moms who feel overwhelmed. And part of that comes from my journey of having you know, a bigger family than I planned. And then this, this journey with Verity, I want to encourage the moms that first of all, if, if God is calling you to this, whether it's, he's calling you to be a mama to a precious little baby that maybe, maybe you weren't expecting, or maybe you ha already have toddlers and you just feel uh, you're just tired, mama, <laughs> you're, you're stretched. You feel like, oh boy, <laughs> you know, here we go again. My body's not quite recovered from the last delivery or, or something. Um, because I feel like that spills over into our homeschool mindset too. We start to listen to the lies of the enemy that tell us you're not good enough. You're failing your kids. You are messing this up. And when, when we allow that foothold, it, it's, <sighs> it affects everything. It affects our marriage. It affects our yeah. older kids that we may not <laughs> recognize how it's affecting them. I could talk a lot about my, my then teenagers, now young adults and how profoundly this, this changed them. I just want to speak to this. God is calling you to, to homeschool, to have another baby, to go on the mission field or whatever he's calling you to. He is absolutely going to equip you. And I think that going th through these seasons for me was about getting back to my roots. And what do I actually believe about God's character? And is, is it in line with scripture? Because some, I grew up in a Christian home. I, I knew the truth, but somehow I had some things subconsciously. I was believing about God that actually were in line with scripture that I was, you know, there, there was a little bit of a works based, maybe not salvation, but for approval, like I wanted God to be pleased with me. And I felt that checking the boxes was part of that. So that's kind of a roundabout answer, <laughs> but I, I just want to pour out love and grace and compassion for that mama who is feeling overwhelmed. That's the the direction um, that that the Lord is leading me and now is now that I have I'm a little seasoned, you know, I'm a grandma, I can say I'm seasoned. <laughs> I feel called to pour into those moms who feel burned out or discouraged or uh, they just can't do this. And uh, my personal website, beverlyjacobson.com, I have some resources that could help those mamas. But I just want to speak grace, so much grace to you, mama, because it is not about checking the boxes. It's not about making it our lives look the way we think they should look compared to somebody's Instagram or yeah. anything else. I think there's a lot of um, comparison that unfortunately homeschool moms tend to get caught up in and it's, we do it to ourselves a lot of times, but that is, that is not of the Lord. That is a tool of the enemy that, um, you know, we're not wise when we compare ourselves with others. We are never going to come out right with that. So, so much grace, so much grace. Was our sermon last night at church even was about not focusing on the the inward, not focusing on the me. Remember, mm -hmm. all one body in Christ, and we're yes, unity. Um, yes, but I often tell moms on the convention floor that you were perfectly designed for this adventure. You might yes. not like it, but God's gonna just like you said, God's gonna equip you because. He didn't equip me to be Verity's mama. He equipped you for that. And that's because you're perfectly designed for that. I'm designed for my four kids. Um, and exactly. Can't, it, they won't ever get, I mean, it's like the most perfect chaos that God gets. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think it's good to embrace the chaos sometimes. I, I like, I like my neat boxes. I like shelves, you know, and schedules, but Sometimes we just need to embrace the chaos. It's part of life too. And my boxes can be nice and neat, but when it comes to the kids, it's <laughs> a whole nother True. Box. And I love <laughs> that about sunlight and the IG or, you know, the instructor, I was open and go, 
yes he did at times and just enough at times but you had the grace to allow it to be your tool and not yes. master over your school day and that's yes. exactly what one light wants it to be they want it to be the tool to help you get through your day not yes I am very grateful. Back in the days when we were starting, there were the, the online forums and I, I was, you know, gleaning all I could from experienced sunlight moms. And I had written out this like 12 year plan, <laughs> which, oh my stars, you know, cause we were going to do this core this year and this core this year. Of course, I didn't know that babies were going to come and all these military moves and deployments. And, you know, I, I'm really glad that there were some seasoned sunlight moms who at that time, I don't even know who they were, but I was getting that from them. They were saying, there's so much in there. Don't feel like you have to do it all They're Your kids are fine. Your kids are going to get so much more just by being with you. I think they really helped set the tone for our sunlight experience because I did have teacher training. I had a, a degree, have a degree in English education, um, not, not elementary, but I remember I wanted school at home. We had a little desk. We had a little whiteboard. I, I liked the idea of a classroom. And then did we sit there? No, <laughs> we, we were on the couch, <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm really just very grateful that we did. We kind of threw that out the window and, and I knew that was okay. Cause I had se seen so many other families from sunlight testify to just the wonderful memories and kids piled on the couch. And now what one precious thing that we do is that our, my, my husband, that daddy loves the books and he did not appreciate if we were going to read a book without him. <laughs> so the read aloud time, I don't almost from the beginning, the, the read alouds have been daddy's part of, of the process. And so in the evenings, you know, the kids grab, you know, Legos to build or something and they listen to dad. And of course he gets to hear the one more chapter, please, <laughs> please. And he, he'll have a couple of them going now. Cause we have a couple of different cores happening, but all the kids listen to, to all, well, maybe not all of them. Teenagers are coming and going and all that, but that is, is something I'm thankful that we started early on is, is letting dad be part of that read aloud. And thankfully he loves to read aloud and he does the voices and all the accents and that's fun too. Um, but that is, is a fun part of our sunlight journey is just the memories of daddy. And now Verity cuddles up with dad and she is absolutely a part of the read aloud time <laughs> with the rest of the family. It's just a really precious uh, evening, part of our evening routine. Oh, very fun. And I, I, I concur. Dads should do the read alouds. And my husband often would read. He'd come home and he would do the read aloud while I could. Yeah. But I could still hear. But yes. I actually can cook dinner without kids hanging on me. and <laughs> That's helpful too. <laughs> and he loved it. I mean, he often would be like, don't go ahead of me. And I'm like. Yes. I <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> Well, Beverly, thank you so much for joining us today. And I just, of course, you. Um, I appreciate the passion that you have for um, our children, no matter the diagnosis of normal or extra. I just mm. love your passion for them and for the families that are raising them up. Thank you so very much. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today. Do you have an idea for a podcast topic? Or do you want to chat with Sunlight on an upcoming episode? Email us at connections at sunlight.com.